Hello and welcome to Data Science for Everyone. In the next few videos, I will be teaching you how to perform exploratory data analysis and statistical analysis in Python using NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and Seaborn. In this video, we will talk about measures of center and spread. Let's start. When we look at a data set, the first thing we often ask is where do most of the values cluster? Measures of center helps us summarize the whole data set with a single value that represent what's typical. We'll talk about three measures of center, mean, median, and mode. Mean is the average value, median is the middle value when the data is sorted, and mode is the most frequent value. To bring these concepts to life, we'll use the famous iris dataset. The iris dataset measures sepal and petal dimensions in centimeters for three species of iris flowers. It is considered sample data and not the entire population of irises. This distinction will matter later on when we do statistics. The math we will use is slightly different for samples compared to the whole population. To begin, we use the read CSV function from pandas to load our dataset. This is the typical way to bring tabular data into Python for analysis. The actual data file is linked in the video description for those who want to follow along. This table shows a snippet of the data. Each row is a flower and each columns are measurements. By looking at the first few rows, we get a feel for what kind of values we are working with before doing an analysis. Real datasets often have missing values, which can cause issues when analyzing them. These values are represented as NANs, which means not a number. We'll have to remove these rows first and clean up the data before beginning analysis. In pandas, we can drop rows with missing data using the drop na method. Handling these cases is important because missing data can affect calculations of center and spread. Visualizing the data helps us see the spread and center. We'll use matplotlib and seaborn plotting library in Python to visualize the iris dataset. We'll import both these libraries and use sns.histplot from Seaborn to draw a histogram of sepal lengths. Taller bars mean more flowers in that sepal length range, making it easy to spot common values and possible outliers. The number of bins sets how granular the ranges are which is controlled by the bins argument. Switching bins from 10 to 20 gives us more detailed picture of how those sepal lengths are distributed. Adjusting the bin size can reveal clusters or patterns that we might miss with fewer bins. Both Seaborn and Matplotlib work together here. Seaborn does the plotting while Matplotlib handles display and labeling. I have detailed tutorials of both Matplotlib and Seaborn in this channel. If you want to watch them, I have left the link in the description. Now let's calculate the mean. We import numpy as np and pass the sepal length column to np.mean method. We see that the sepals of iris flowers have a mean length of about 5.8 cm. The mean is sensitive to extreme values, but is reasonable for a balanced data like this, which don't have extreme values. The median is found by sorting all values and picking the middle one. While mean is sensitive to extreme values, Median is not as sensitive. To demonstrate, here I have created a list that contains a big outlier value of 1000. Calculating both mean and median shows how the mean shifts upward while the median stays closer to the other values. NumPy makes median calculations easy with the np.median method. Computing the median of sepal lengths, we see that the sepals of iris flowers have a median length of 5.8 cm, which is the same as the mean. This is because there are little to no outliers in this dataset. The mode is the value that occurs most often. We can calculate the mode using the mode function from Python's statistics module. In the first example, 3 shows up twice, more than any other value. So that's the mode. In the second example, every value appears only once, so technically there is no mode. However, Python's mode function from the statistics module returns the first value from the list if there is no repeated value. In the third example, both 3 and 7 repeat twice, 
so both could be considered modes. The statistics module chooses the first one it finds. For more complex scenarios, especially with ties, we want to use the pandas mode method, which can return all the modes, as I'll demonstrate later. Mode works great for categorical data as well. If we have a list of letters, calling mode gives the most common one. In cases where there is more than one mode, using the mode method from pandas library will return all the modes. This is why pandas is often preferred for data analysis. It handles ties gracefully and works with both numerical and categorical data. Here we see that the pandas mode method returns both B and D as the modes for this pandas series. To get the most common sepal length from the iris dataset, we use the mode method from pandas. It is a quick way to see which measurement is the most frequent among the sampled species. Here we overlay the mean and median on the histogram of sepal lengths. Let's break down the code. First, we plot our sepal length data as a histogram using the hist method from Seaborn. Then we draw a black vertical line for the mean and a red vertical line for the median using the axvline method from matplotlib. The legend clearly labels which line shows the mean and which one shows the median. If the data is fairly symmetrical, the mean and median will be close together. But if there are extreme values, the mean gets pulled towards them, while the median stays more stable. This visual comparison makes it easy to see if the mean is being influenced by unusual data and decide which measure better describes the dataset. Extreme observations are also known as outliers. Here we demonstrate what happens when we add a big outlier. We append a flower with a much larger sepal length using loc. When recalculating mean and median, notice how the mean shoots up while the median barely moves. Outliers drag the mean, but the median is resistant. This is why in certain scenarios, median is sometimes preferred. Knowing the center tells us what's typical. But what about how much values vary from each other? Measures of spread answers that. Do all the values hug the center closely or is there a lot of variation? There are several ways to measure spread. Some of them that we will discuss are variance, standard deviation, mean absolute deviation and interquartile range. Each gives a different flavor of how numbers are scattered around the center. First up, variance. It's a number that captures the average square distance each point is from the mean. Let's analyze the iris dataset to understand it better. Let's say we want to measure how far each sepal length are from the dataset's mean. First, we subtract the mean length from each data point and save it as sepal underscore length underscore dist. Next, we square those distances so that the negatives don't cancel out the positives. Then we add them up and divide by one less than the number of data points. That's the variance. We are subtracting one from the total data points because this is an approximation of the sample dataset and not the population dataset. As we can see, the variance is 0.68 cm squared. It's important to note that the units of variance are squared. The higher the variance, the more spread out the data. NumPy has a method called var that calculates variance in one step by setting the DDoF argument to 1. The DDoF argument is called delta degrees of freedom. If we do not specify DDoF equals to 1, a slightly different formula is used to calculate variance and should only be used if we have a data of a full population and not a sample. In our case, the data from IRIS is just a sample dataset and is not representative of the full population. Standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, which returns the spread to normal units, in this case centimeters instead of centimeter squared. We can take the square root directly or use np.std method with ddof set to 1. Standard deviation is generally more interpretable than variance since it is in the same units as the original data. Another less common way to measure spread is by using the mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation 
skips the squaring. It simply averages how far each value is from the mean using absolute values. Standard deviation is more common, but mean absolute deviation is intuitive. It treats all differences equally. Now let's move on to the next method of spread called interquartile range. Before discussing interquartile range, let's first understand what a quantile is. A quantile divides the data into equal segments. The 0.5 quantile is just the median. By calling np.quantile with 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, we get the 25th, 50th and 75th percentiles. These are critical for describing where most of the data falls. Let's visualize quantiles using a histogram. Before drawing the histogram, we first need to compute the 25th, 50th and 75th percentiles. We'll use np.quantile method and save them as q1, median and q3 variables respectively. This code overlays the histogram to mark the quartiles. As before, we have used axe vline method to draw each vertical quartile line. It's a good way to show the quartiles visually. Each line divides the sorted data into clear regions. While histograms are great to visualize quantiles, there's a better way of visualizing them using box plots. A box plot visually summarizes the data into five key numbers. The minimum, first quartile, Q1, median, the third quartile or Q3, and maximum values. The box itself stretches from Q1 to Q3 and highlights the interquartile range with a line inside the box marking the median. Whiskers extend from the box to the minimum and maximum values showing the overall spread while any outliers appear as dots beyond the whiskers. This design makes it easy to see the central tendency, variability and potential outliers in a dataset at a glance. Let's see how we can make a box plot using matplotlib. In matplotlib, the orange line marks the median, which is the central value. Box edges are Q1 and Q3. Whiskers extend to minimum and maximum. And any dots outside the whiskers represent outliers. This plot quickly reveals if the data is symmetrical, skewed or contains outliers. As we can see, the sepal length column has no outliers. Plotting the sepal width column, however, we can see that there are four outliers. If we want to slice our data into several chunks, we can use the np.lintspace method from NumPy. It quickly generates evenly spaced intervals, perfect for quintiles, deciles, or wherever your curiosity wants to go. Here, we are splitting the data into five equal segments by setting the arguments to 0, 1, and 6. The interquartile range or IQR is calculated as the difference between the 75th and 25th percentiles. It describes the spread of the middle 50% of the data. We can either do it manually or SciPy's IQR method does it in one line, as shown in this code. So what counts as an outlier? A common rule is anything lower than 25th percentile minus 1.5 times the IQR or higher than 75th percentile plus 1.5 times the IQR are outliers. These criteria are widely used in statistics to inform how box plots whiskers are drawn. As demonstrated here, we have used Boolean indexing using pandas to determine the outliers for the sepal width. Instead of doing these computations one at a time, the describe method from pandas summarizes all the key stats at once. It's a great first step for any analysis, giving us a glance of the dataset's shape and spread. I'm going to end this video by showing you how to draw a box plot for each group of the iris species. Box plots grouped by species show how different iris types vary in sepal length. Seaborn's box plot method makes it really easy. Just pass in the data, the grouping column in X and the value column in Y. It's helpful for comparing distributions side by side. With that, we have come to an end of the first part of this series on statistical data analysis in Python. In the next video, I'll teach you probability. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.